Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Friday mountain weather update, and it is just clear as a bell out there across a lot of the west with this big ridge of high pressure. This is the Lone Peak Tram Cam uh, up at Big Sky. You can see one of the tram cars there in the distance, and uh, just a spectacular view uh, and a warm day across the west today. I mean, these freezing levels are way up there. Let me take you to Winter Park, Colorado. Bright sunshine out there this morning. Uh, light winds, this high pressure really in control. Um, this is Solitude Mountain up there in uh, Utah and Big Cottonwood Canyon. I mean, blue skies. Uh, and one last stop here. This is uh, Jackson Hole down in town. There's the town square and blue skies. It's going to be a warm one up there today. All right, here's radar across the west proving what we just saw, that it is crystal clear across the west, high and dry right now. Not a thing to, there's nothing on radar anywhere across the west. Now in the northeast, it's a different story. We had one um, clipper come through yesterday, and the next one's already on radar, moving through Sault Ste. Marie, parts of upstate Michigan, northern Michigan. That clipper will be arriving uh, in the next 24 hours across a lot of the northeast. I'll look at the timing of that here in a second. But let me talk about the water vapor satellite imagery here across the west and just kind of give you the setup. So on this, in the low levels, the oranges and the reds are going to be your drier air. The moistures and the whites and the blues. A couple of things to point out. There's our cutoff area of low pressure um, brushing California. The role with this is to break down the high pressure and then basically the low disintegrates. So it'll make a movement somewhere right in here, but weakening as it does. It will set the stage, though. We've got a pretty big storm system behind it, and there's one more behind that. It'll set the stage for these storm systems to have a more profound impact uh, on the West in the coming days. Especially, I mean, this is the last day of February. Once we get into that first solid week of March, those storm systems will be bigger players in the forecast. Okay, here are my bullet points this morning. Um, so the next storm system is not until 3, 2, 3, 3, and 3, 4. That's when it moves into the west, in the Intermountain West. It will grab some colder air and pull it in. I'll show you what it looks like on the jet stream here in a second. Uh, and then there's another storm system behind that, a number 2, and that one's going to be 3, 5 through 3, 7. Here are my, here's my snow timeline, best odds of snow for Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, the Pacific Northwest, Tahoe, and the Northeast. You can see the dates. It's kind of two different waves, two different storm systems. <clears throat> so, for example, in the Wasatch, you've got moderate snow on 3-3 and then heavy snow on 3-6 with the second storm. In Colorado, you've got light snow, <clears throat> afternoon 3-3 into the, uh, the morning of 3-4, and then heavy snow <clears throat> on 3-6 into 3-7. Interior BC, your best shot of snow doesn't arrive until late. It's like late 3-6 into 3-7. The Pacific Northwest, a couple of different waves with those two storm systems. Um, your heavier batch, though, is 3-6, 3-7. You can see in the Northeast... That next uh, clipper comes in late tonight into tomorrow with up to moderate snow accumulation. You might have a heavy shot coming in on 3-5. All right, let's drill down. This is Alta, Utah at about, uh, effective about 9,000 feet. So it's dry today, dry Saturday, dry most of Sunday, and then that first storm system comes in late Sunday into Monday, and you can see the accumulation starting to starting to tick up there on the chart and it would continue 3-3 three, three and beyond um, but man is it going to be it's going to be low wind up until that it's dry lots of sunshine and yes warm 36 at 9,000 today 38 tomorrow uh, 35 on Sunday and a little bit colder on Monday so we've got three straight days where the air temps will rise above freezing in the afternoons at 9,000 feet. Okay, um, let's do the jet stream here and talk about the pattern. So this is the jet stream, winds at about 30,000 feet up in the atmosphere. And I'm looking for the brighter colors, the oranges, the reds, that's going to show you where the higher winds are up there at jet stream level. And I'll start this at 11 o'clock today, and it, you can clearly see the massive ridge of high pressure across the west. 
the big arcing to the north of the jet stream, bottling up the cold air in Canada, allowing all the, the, the warmth to just build across the west. And then the dip in the jet is across the Great Lakes in the northeast, where we have that clipper moving through. Also take note of the cutoff low moving into California. That'll help to break down this high. Okay, here's early on Saturday the 1st. There's our cutoff low. Still looking at a big ridge all the way up into parts of B.C. at times. Uh, here's late on Saturday. There's the cutoff low moving through Utah, the Four Corners, Colorado, New Mexico. It might have a touch of precip with it. Um, okay, here's late on Sunday, March 2nd. Uh, you can see our storm system carving a trough out in parts of California. Then that whole trough moves into parts of Nevada, Utah, Arizona, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado into the third. There's late on the third, New Mexico, third into the early fourth, and then it departs out into the plains where it's probably going to have um, some strong to severe thunderstorms out ahead of it in uh, Arkansas, Missouri. Okay, now behind it, what, what's coming after this thing? Then that storm moves into the Midwest. This is 11 a.m. on Wednesday, March 5th. You can see the next dip in the jet moving into the Pacific Northwest. That's our next storm system, 567. Here it comes. Um, here's late on the 6th, moving through Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, and into Colorado, New Mexico, and then it moves out into the plains. So two straight storms, but then behind it, more arcing of the jet, more high-pressure ridging, likely around the 8th, 9th of March. Okay, snow accumulation over time. On this, your light blues are going to be uh, your lightest snow accumulations, under 3 inches. The greens are 3 to 6, yellows are 6 plus, reds 10 plus. Um, okay, so here this we'll start this at 11 o'clock today. There's your snow moving into the northeast, late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Some places might get a few inches of accumulation out of this, moderate, 3 to 6. High and dry across the west, there ain't nothing on this in the Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon. Now, okay, there's our cutoff low uh, over the four corners. Just a little bit of snow with that. Um, this is early on Sunday, March 2nd. All right, here's late on Sunday, March 2nd. You can see the, the first of the two storm systems right there moving into California, Nevada with snow building. Moves into Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, Montana. This is late on Monday the 3rd right here. Probably a little bit of snow for Denver in the front range, especially Denver south and west, and some across the plains, but there's 11 a.m. on Tuesday, March 4th, and then that storm moves out into the plains. Here comes the second storm for 353637. This is 11 a.m. on March 6th, Thursday. Snow from California, Nevada, Utah, to Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona. There's early on Friday, March 7th, and then behind it, Big high pressure ridging across the west, all the actions up into BC and the Pacific Northwest at that point. Okay, here are my numbers. Okay, so all of today through 3 7, through the 7th of March, I've got 8 to 14 inches for the Wasatch, about a foot for the Tetons, and a bunch of sixes for Montana, uh, 6 to 7 inches for Idaho. A lot of sixes for interior BC, four or five there through Banff Sunshine up to Marmot Basin. Uh, six to 12 for a lot of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, anywhere from eight to 13 for the Sierra, Shasta, Tahoe down to Mammoth. Uh, we probably will see snow, Snowball, Arizona, and also to Bryan Head, Utah, where we desperately need snow. And in Colorado, anywhere from six to 12 inches of accumulation. Uh, across pretty much all the mountain zones, pretty uniform. But again, these numbers come from two separate storm systems, so these numbers do not all come at one time. Northern Arizona, about eight, northern uh, New Mexico, about eight inches there. Ski Santa Fe, Angel Fire in New Mexico, uh, Taos, New Mexico. Up into the northeast, looking for anywhere from six to 12 inches of accumulation. Uh, upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. So still looking at good numbers there. You've got the Clipper coming in tonight, tomorrow, and then there's another storm behind that, potentially a third one way down the road. Less in Massachusetts. Okay, so we'll end on the big western map here. And uh, again, really it's a waiting game. It's warm and it's dry right now, but you've got two storms coming. 
three two through three five and then three five through three seven somewhere in there um, and some colder air guys thanks for tuning in here always appreciate it take care and have a great day